We're knowledge workers. We craft both the substance and the flow of knowledge. So conferences give us the ability to improve our skill set together, to share ideas and sort of cross-pollinate approaches. It's our place of, of growth and, and nourishment. I'm Diana Montalian. I architect systems of software. And at events especially, I also create hands-on learning experiences, the kinds of things that help us explore the practices for people to explore and experiment with what systems architecture is in the modern age. I also wrote a book called Learning Systems Thinking. The work that I do with and for events and conferences is the most important work I do because I think it has the most long-term impact. I think that together we create the potential for change that we can't create alone. And so my whole career always involves supporting communities of practice, being part of conferences, developing experiences for people at them, um, because I, I think it's really core to what, we, to what we do. I'm really excited about the workshop this year because I developed a, like a murder mystery party, a role-playing game, where everyone who comes to the workshop is the newly hired architect for the fictitious Mago company who has a real world systems problem that will be very familiar to most people. It isn't a passive learning experience. We learn the skills, but at the same time, we're also sort of racing to come up with a recommendation to help this software system rescue itself from, from drowning. And this is one of the biggest benefits of it being in person this year, because we have a little more flexibility in what we can do. We can play improv games to learn architecture. What we're learning and practicing is three things. One, how do you figure out what to do when there's no right answer? How do you figure out the best possible answer? This is through inquiry, through, through thinking, through prototyping. What we do is we establish patterns in a system. How the system as a whole changes, moves, and operates, not just how the software itself does. And then the third thing that we're doing is that we're shifting the rules and the structures and the patterns that are influencing our software systems so that we can improve them. So in other words, we're not just thinking, we're thinking about thinking. We're not just delivering software, we're thinking about delivering software. And we're delivering how we deliver software. And if we think we can avoid that, we're probably wrong. Because in fact, everything in production is only what we thought, is only what we talked about. If we want something different in production, then we have to think differently. So in the workshop, we're going to just throw ourselves in to a situation in which there is no right answer. There is no one way to redesign this software system to respond to the crisis of software. And instead, we're going to practice developing a recommendation that we have some good, strong, sound reasoning behind will actually make an impact. And different teams will probably come up with different answers, and that's okay. Because in systems, there's usually not one door into understanding what's going on. So we practice. There are two things that we're always overcoming in these scenarios. One is we blame the wrong things. There's lots of system science that show when humans are confused about what's happening, they blame and they blame the wrong thing. The other team, for example. And then the other biggest blocker is counterintuitiveness, meaning we know where the problem is, we kind of know what we need to deal with, but we're pushing it in the wrong direction, as Jay Forrester says. We are making it worse. 
And of course we are, because we're facing the problem from the mindset that caused the problem in the first place, that designed it. In the context that we acted, it was probably fine. It was probably a great decision. It doesn't fit anymore, which means our mindset doesn't fit anymore. And so learning to recognize blame and counterintuitiveness is a really core systems thinking skill or we'll just continue to. Piercing says that if a factory is torn down, but the rationality that built it is left standing, we just build another factory. And we see this in tech all the time. It's not a bad thing, and we can't really avoid it even if it was. At the same time, as knowledge workers, as system developers, we need to learn to diagnose counterintuitiveness when we find it. In the software itself, we have these pipelines that end in a dead end. And now we need them to talk to each other. Now we need them to be in good relationship. Now we need teams who have this microservice or that microservice to also communicate with each other. And that's where our learning and skill set often ends. Also because we don't think of the types of skills we need to design systems as tech skills. We call them soft skills, but in fact, they're the hardest ones, they're the harder ones. And so the practicing of systems thinking, um, pattern thinking, nonlinear thinking, this is about how do you synthesize the information that's available to you and learn from other people's point of view and their experience and still take action and have that action be impactful, but also not everyone needs to think about the system all the time. It is about us being able to do it together when we need to. It can be really jarring to understand how complex, even relatively small information systems are nowadays, how relationally complex they are. And if you're somebody that is good at pattern thinking or designing relationships in people's software communication, you can get totally burned out playing glue roles where you're just trying to hold together what doesn't want to be together, whether it's the people or the software or both. So I realized that we don't have a curriculum. We have an anti-curriculum. We often are learning exactly the opposite of systemic approaches. And there are brilliant people over the last 50 more years who have contributed to our understanding of systems and systems thinking, but we've been slow to apply them to the world of software, in part because we didn't have to, and now we do. The systems aspect is something that I'm very interested in and always drawn to, and so it became the place where I wanted to try and begin to work with others to develop this curriculum and to be specific about what we could practice that really would make a difference. So in the workshop, rather than explain to people like an academic class what systems thinking is, we just do it. We get together, we create enough of a scenario, enough of a shared understanding, because that's really when we learn. And in the talk, it's about shifting our mindset away from knowledge stock, which is how much I know. We give a whiteboard test to show how much JavaScript we can do, to knowledge flow. How much knowledge can I generate? And how can I enable the organization or just the people around me through software, through the production and crafting of software, how can I create more knowledge flow so that the people who are engaged in the software system get more and more benefit out of using it, out of uh, the relationships between the software parts. And it's something we, we think about the benefit of a product but we don't think about the benefit of the system. And the value of a system is how well do the parts of the system work together to do something none of them could do alone. There's so much opportunity for that now. Workshops, 
talks, conferences, they are our opportunity to learn and grow and practice together.